We thank and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his tawfiq, his hidayah, and his blessings and bounties, and that he enabled us to pray our salah in jama'ah in the masjid, and that he made us from those who tread a path seeking the knowledge of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us and to increase us in beneficial knowledge and in righteous actions. As always, during this time of the year, we hear too much about the Mawlid and Nabawi as Sharif the birthday of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we find people celebrating this birthday in different ways. And some of them claiming that it is from our deen, that it is legislated. One of the fatawa of the Darul Ifta in Misra in Egypt says that, that there is consensus that it is jais, it is permissible and it is not mustahab, it is not wajib, but it is permissible. Which means that it is not from those things upon which you are rewarded. Then there are those who say, and in a recent um, post that is circulating, those who say that it is sunnah and was done in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and subhanallah that it was witnessed by thousands of sahaba. And this is on a whatsapp post that is circulating and the author did not put his name. You know, but it is circulating and people are being told that it is sunnah. So we have to look at this question then, because if it is a sunnah, then it is necessary for us to establish it. As we are commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to follow the sunnah of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to follow the sharia that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent him with. But those who do not celebrate it, they hold a different view, and this is the opposite, that it is a bid'ah, that it is an innovation. And so to establish the reality and the ruling upon this action of al-ihtifal bin Mawlid al-Nabawi, of celebrating the prophetic birthday, we have to look at the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the actions of the Sahaba and those who followed them in righteousness. Firstly, in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are commanded, as he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اتبعوا ما أنزل إليكم من ربكم ولا تتبعوا من دونه أولياء قليلا ما تذكرون Follow that which has been sent down to you from your Lord. And do not follow awliya, allies, friends, or protectors besides him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, qalilam ma tadhakkarun. Little do you remember, little do you take heed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated in his book, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, you have a most excellent example. For whoever hopes for Allah 
and the last day and remembers Allah abundantly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ نُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Say to them, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you really love Allah, then follow me. Then Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. And Allah is most forgiving and most merciful. So we have been commanded by the book of Allah to follow that which has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That which has been conveyed by our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that if we want to attain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to follow closely the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ever celebrate his birthday? Firstly, with regards to his birthday, then there is ikhtilaf of the ulama based on yani, when was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam born? Ikhtilaf was he born on the 7th of Rabi'ul Awwal or the 9th or the 12th? And some even said, was he born in Rabi'ul Awwal? They differed. And to the extent that no one made or could make tarjih of his statement over anyone else. The difference is so much that no one can say that his statement is the correct statement. That he was born the 12th or he was born the ninth, or he was born the seventh, or he was born in different month. There is ikhtilaf with regards to that. But what is certain is that he died the twelfth of, of Rabi'u al-Awwal. That is certain. That he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died on the twelfth of Rabi'u al-Awwal. So the day that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died, which was the darkest day, for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the darkest day that ever came upon Medina and the darkest day that Sahaba ever saw as mentioned by Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu this day they have taken as a day of celebration and as a day of Eid as a day of festivity claiming that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born on this day when in reality it is only known that he sallallahu alayhi wa died on this day. That is the only certainty that he died on the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never celebrated his birthday. Nor did he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ever command any sahabi to celebrate his birthday. So there is no words in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indicating towards its celebration or its commemoration or its encouragement there is nothing at all there is nothing at all not in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the birth of Yahya and the birth of Isa Allah Ta'ala does not mention the birth of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah doesn't mention the birth of our Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And yet today you have those who when quoting weak narrations, the narrators of which is unknown, and they found the words when you were born. It's all, just the words, when you were born. Subhanallah, they say, you see, this is a mawlid. This is the deal that you can celebrate Milad al Nabi. Because when the Sahabi praised the Prophet, he said, When you were born, this and this happened. Subhanallah, if Allah wa ta'ala, this is a Sahabi that has mentioned, in the narration is weak, it cannot be established. But according to them, the Sahabi has mentioned the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this now indicates that we must celebrate Milad. Then when Allah Ta'ala mentions 
Yawma ulidtu wa yawma amutu wa yawma ub'athu hayya And he mentions yawma ulida wa yawma yamutu wa yawma yub'athu hayya With regards to Isa and with regards to Yahya Then isn't it more so emphasized that the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Would now indicate that we must celebrate the birth of Isa and the birth of Yahya If merely mentioning the word birth Or the day I was born Or the day he was born Is a proof for celebrating Milad al Nabi, it is mentioned in the Quran, but not for the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for Nabi Isa and for Nabi Yahya alayhi wa sallam. So now what should we Muslims do? Celebrate Christmas? Invent another celebration for Nabi Yahya also? Oh, subhanallah. So where's the dalil? There's no dalil in that. No Muslim ever came with that. No Muslim ever understood that from the ayat, because it mentions their birth, it indicates that you must celebrate it. No Muslim ever said this. That's why it was not celebrated. That is why it was not celebrated. And, subhanallah, the Khulafa al-Rashidun, the rightly guided Khalifas, the four Khalifas of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who are the best of this ummah, after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'in, they did not celebrate the birth of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu was the most beloved person to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the men of this ummah. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, our mother, was the most beloved of the women of this ummah to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They never celebrated the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Never. You are not going to find any narration. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, I love you more than everything except myself. And to whom Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, La wallahi ya Umar, no, by Allah or Umar, not until you love me more than everyone, including yourself. So he said, Wallahi al an, ya Rasulullah, now I love you more than I love you more than everyone, even including myself. And Nabi Sallallahu confirmed it when he said, Al an ya Umar, now O Umar, now O Umar. He confirmed that Umar loves him more than everyone else, including him himself, but he didn't celebrate the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nor did Uthman, nor did Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Nor did the baqiyatul ashra al-mubashirina bil jannah. Those who were promised jannah from the ten, yani the rest of them, they did not celebrate it also. Nor the generality of the sahaba. Nor the tabi'een. Nor the tabi'een. Nor the atba'u tabi'een. Imagine, pay attention to this, ayyuh ikhwah. The Sahaba didn't practice it. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't practice it. The Tabi'een didn't practice it. The Atba'u Tabi'een didn't practice it. The four Imams of the well-followed Madahib, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Subhanallah, all of them, None of them celebrated it. None of them celebrated it. Where are muqallidun? Where are those who claim that it is wajib for you to blind follow one of the four madahib? In which madhab, which imam of which madhab said you can celebrate Milad nabi If it is wajib on you to blind follow, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu Hanifa did not celebrate Milad nabi Why are you celebrating Milad nabi It is not permissible for you to celebrate Milad nabi if you are a muqallid of Abu Hanifa. If you are a muqallid of Imam Malik, Imam Malik did not celebrate Milad nabi No Imam Shafi, no Imam Ahmad. So whoever is following the four Imams as they claim, it is not permissible for you to celebrate Milad nabi because it is wajib according to you to follow the four Imams. So none of the Imams followed it. None of the Imams did it. 
عندنا امام جديد يا the best generations have now passed the best generations of this ummah خير الناس best of mankind so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said qarni my generation the sahaba thumma alladhina yalunahum then those who follow them the tabi'in thumma alladhina yalunahum then those who follow them the atba'u tabi'in these are the best of generations none of them celebrated milad an nabi none of them until in the third or fourth century in the fourth century after hijra al ubaidiyun al fatimiyun the fatimid shi'as introduced the ihtifal of the mawalid of the mawlids not one mawlid of the mawalid of the ahlul bayt al hasan al husain fatima ali and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was how did it look if they celebrated like today we know when they say ahlul bayt they are speaking about al hasan and husain and fatima and ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhum they don't even speak about nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam the shi'a they don't even speak about nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam they speak about ali and they speak about Hussein you know and they speak about Fatima and Hassan by the way just so by the way and so because they celebrated the birthdays of Ahlul Bayt they have to celebrate the birthday of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but already some of the ulama of the ummah was already saying these people they are out of the fold of Islam These people upon Kufr Akbar and Shirk Akbar, these are the Shia, Fatimi Shia. But they are the ones now who introduced the celebration of the Milad of Nabi. This remained with the Shia. This remained with the Shia and still did not come to the Sunnah. It did not come to the Sunnah until the sixth century of the Hijrah. The sixth century, five hundred years have passed. Some of the ulama say, like Ibn Khaliqan and Abu Shama and Ibn Kathir, that this is the late 6th century or the early 7th century. When the king, Al-Mudhafar Abu Sa'id Kawkaburi, Al-Mudhafar Abu Sa'id Kawkaburi introduced, and he adopted this celebration of the Milad from one of the old sheikhs. يعني they say from the Salihin يعني من المتصوفة so he adopted it from him and as we know there are many practices in which the Sufis and the Shia are the same this is just one such practice the king then adopted it from him and made it a يعني a day of Eid a day of celebration and he would subhanallah As some of the historians mention, he would roast 500 heads of cattle. He would roast thousands, tens of thousands of chickens. Plates of sweetmeats were put out for the people. And entertainers were brought. Those who sang and hit the drums. Those who sang and hit the drums. And he would dance with him himself. Subhanallah. This is how it was introduced to the people of the Sunnah after the Shia. This is how it came to the generality of the Muslims from the Shia. It was introduced by the skin. Some of them, they tried to justify it by saying, but he was a good king. He was a just ruler. Subhanallah, it doesn't matter who you are, you cannot introduce things into the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, اِتَّبِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Follow that which has come down to you from your Lord. And this is not from that. And then a king comes and he introduces a celebration which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not do. Sahaba didn't do, Tabi'in didn't do, Atba'u Tabi'in didn't do, four Imams didn't do. And he brings it 
in the sixth century after the hijrah of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is it accepted from him because he is a good king? Or is it stated, أَمْ لَهُمْ شُرَكَاءَ شَرَعُوا لَهُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا لَمْ يَأْذَنْ بِهِ اللَّهِ Do they have partners who legislate for them in the deen, that which Allah gave no permission for? Do they have partners that legislate for them sharia besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Subhanallah, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala said, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم was still alive he did not die on the 12th of the Rabi'u al-Awwal yet he was still alive when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا that this day I have completed your deen for you this day I have completed your deen for you and I have perfected my favor upon you, and I am pleased with Islam for you as a deen. That day Islam was complete. That day Islam was perfect. <coughs> what was not deen that day, will never be deen after that day. As Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala said. So, this was not part of the deen at that time. Nor in the first and praiseworthy righteous generations of the Salaf of this Ummah until it was introduced by the Shia Rafita about whom some of the ulama or the Shia Fatimiyya upon whom some of the ulama declared to be out of the fold of Islam and then was adopted by al mudaffar Abu Sa'id Kaukaburi the king following the Sufis following the Sufis and on the night of the Mawlid from after Maghrib, he would gather them together and have a sama'ah. You know where they come together to listen to these songs that they sing? And they would beat the tabool, they would beat the drums, and they would spend the night like this. Subhanallah. Something which Allah Ta'ala did not legislate. This is how it originated. This is how people became attached to it. Why? Because people like what suits the nafs. Coming together, eating, Hundreds of heads of cattle and thousands of chickens and plates full of sweetmeats and singing and dancing all together. It is very much like it is today. Yeah, very much like it is today. So people like it. And then they say you feel so nice afterwards. Why? Because the nafs is satisfied. The nafs is satisfied. Not because it is deen. Not because it's deen. Subhanallah. So the first thing is that it doesn't come from the Book of Allah, doesn't come from the Sunnah, doesn't come from the Sahaba, doesn't come from the Imams of the Deen. Now we ask the question again. So is it Sunnah or is it Bid'ah? Is it Sunnah or is it Bid'ah? What is Bid'ah? What is Sunnah? Sunnah is that which comes from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also a hadith. You see, you see, it's in the Sunnah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked on fasting of Mondays. He said, it's the day that I was born, and it's the day that the Quran was revealed to me, and the day I was sent as a prophet. See, he mentioned the day I was born. He mentioned the day I was born. So what they say? This is a proof for celebrating Milad al-Nabi. It's a proof for celebrating it. What did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? He fasted on Mondays. He fasted every Monday, never celebrated his birthday. He fasted every Monday. Right? In giving shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do they do? They celebrate. They celebrate. When it is Eid, it is haram to fast. So how is it the Eid of Milad al-Nabi? Right? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is fasting. And how if Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was fasting, do you celebrate and feast and say that you are following the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Well, it's total opposites. Total opposites. So, and there is no Daniel in the fact that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned his birth. There's no Daniel in that. He himself did not celebrate it. He did not teach it, did not encourage it. Didn't speak about it. Right, subhanallah. So, 
it was introduced. And when something is introduced into the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يعني أحدث في الدين أحدث في الدين Our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say continuously وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ So you want to know the ruling? It is أُحْدِثَ فِي الدِّينِ Introduced into the deen. Our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would warn Beware of things introduced. المُحْدَثَاتِ مِنَ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ Because every introduced matter, every novelty, every new thing, it is a bid'ah. It is an innovation. وَكُلُّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance. Every innovation is misguidance. So this is not from the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not qawliyya, not fi'liyya, not taqririyya, not i'tiqadiyya, not talqiyya, not any aspect of the sunnah of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does mawlid in Nabi for under. It doesn't fit into any category of the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, if it is not from his sunnah, then it is bid'ah. It is not from his sunnah, it is bid'ah. And every bid'ah as Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said is misguidance. So what about the narration that 30,000 sahaba witnessed uh, Al-Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu praising Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was praising in, in the presence of 30,000 subhanallah. And the author of the post he brings so many references. And in reality it only has two sources. But he repeats everyone who has mentioned it like it is a reference. Right, so he just tries to make it look more. But in reality, it's the only two sources. Al-Tabarani and I think al Two sources basically that it goes back to. And when, when Hakim mentioned it, and he doesn't say also that al said that in its isnad is narrators that I do not know. In the chain of narration for this narration that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa was praised in the presence of the Sahaba and it was mentioned when you were born and so this is, this is the ideal for Mawlid in this narration, in the chain of narration there is people that is unknown even to those who mention the hadith Imam al-Dahabi rahimahullah ta'ala when he mentioned the statement of al-Aytami and Al-Hakim in his Mustadrak, when Al-Hakim said um, it's Ruwad, is يعني, تفرد به رواده الأعراب عن آبائهم the, It's narrators, the better ones, they are the only ones who report it from their fathers. They are the only ones who report it from their fathers. And the likes of them, and he generally lie on their own. They won't fabricate. So Imam al Dahabi said, وَلَكِنَّنَا لَا نَعْرِفُهُمْ However, we don't know who this is. We don't know who this is that is narrating the hadith, this narration, this hadith. So how can we say what they would and what they wouldn't do if we don't know who it is? So that narration that they mentioned and that they are sending on WhatsApp, Saying, so you see, Miladun Nabi is a sunnah. End of debate. Subhanallah, this is a lie. This is a lie. The reason the person didn't put his name because he knows the narration is not authentic. He knows the narration is not sahih. So he sends it out without putting his name so that it doesn't come back to him. You know, this is, subhanallah, how deceiving they are. One of them, he says, this celebration of Milad nabi is wajib. It's wajib. He takes the Qur'an, he swears on the Qur'an, it is wajib. From when this Qur'an was revealed to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, until today, until today, they will never find the dalil in the Qur'an for the celebration. They will never find it. But he says, he takes a qasam on the Qur'an. 
<coughs> that it is wajib. Subhanallah. This innovation, this bid'ah, in its asal as we just saw, it doesn't have an asal in the Quran and the Sunnah. So it is bid'atun asliyah. The bid'atun asliyah, it is bid'ah in essence. Something can be legislated in essence, but bid'ah due to what is attached. Dhikr for example, dhikr, dhikr Allah Azza wa Jal is legislated. We must make dhikr Allah Azza wa Jal. We must remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always in the manner that Allah is legislated, in the manner that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught. And when you take that asal, that ibadah of dhikr, and you add to it your own things, like let's sing it in chorus, like oh you write your own adhkar, exaggerating in the praises of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it may become bid'ah idafiyah. It is bid'ah due to what is attached. Mawlad al Nabi, this celebration is bid'ah asliyah. It is a bid'ah in its essence. There is no asl for it in the Quran and the Sunnah. Then when you look at what is attached to it, it makes it from the worst kind of innovations. Bid'atun, munkaratun, qabiha. A, subhanallah, a detestable, ugly, reprehensible innovation. Why? Attached to it is singing. Singing. Yani, along with musical instruments. Which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yani prohibited. Which he made haram. In it is ikhtilat. Ikhtilat, free mixing of males and females that are non-mahrams. Women dress them up to go to the milad celebrations. They dress them up. <coughs> Subhanallah, they beautify themselves. And they go in jama'ah to the, to the celebration. And then what you have? The women and the men, they, stay up, they facing each other. The women and the men, they can see each other. Oh, subhanallah. They can see each other. Big fitness. Sometimes they do this in the masajid. The drums are beaten. Everyone is swaying and singing. And the men and the women can see each other. Subhanallah. On top of that, they have introduced their own adhkar their own remembrances to recite in order to remember the Prophet ﷺ. Much of it containing shirk and much of it yani, exaggeration in the praises of Rasulullah ﷺ, to the extent that they even call on him ﷺ. They even seek deliverance and rescue from him. They seek aid and madad from him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is from the matters of shirk without a doubt and they are doing it claiming that this is to remember Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam imagine the thing which Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave his own life to eradicate that people make shirk with Allah you are reviving shirk with Allah and you say you are doing it to remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this subhanallah, worse than just bid'ah, is the shirk that is attached. In the burda, qasidatul burda, that they read for this milad celebrations, that contain shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the calling of madad ya Rasulullah, we know this. It's not something unknown to us. That they call madad ya Rasulullah. Madad, yani they're seeking madad from our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they're calling upon him. They believe that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, you know, cognitive, is, 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 is aware and knowing of every gathering 
where these celebrations are done and that he attends it. That he attends it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they get up and say, Marhaban Jaddal Husayni. Welcome, O oh, grandfather of Hussein. Marhaban ya Nur Aini. Welcome, O oh, the light of my eyes. Welcome who? Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then some of the kathabun, they actually pretend to see him. They actually pretend to see Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entering these gatherings, like Khabith Umar and his, his friends and his students. You know, subhanallah, imagine a sheikh who is always lying, and so his students, they also become liars. Subhanallah, telling people that the sheikh, sheikh just met Rasulullah sallallahu somewhere, he just went somewhere, and then he met Rasulullah sallallahu Telling people that there are people that can meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in a wakeful state. In other words, now you can meet him sallallahu alayhi wa not see him in your dreams, not have a dream of him sallallahu alayhi wa no. That he comes to you while you awake. You know, modern day sahaba, they all become sahaba. Well, subhanallah, these lies, these lies with which they deceive the masses to whom it sounds very fantastic. You know, subhanallah, amazing. The Sheikh he met Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes to him, he visits him. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam enters the gatherings of the Milad and Nabi. You see, it begins with something small. The gatherings of the Milad and Nabi, every gathering where Salawat is mentioned, he comes. He comes, he enters there and you stand up out of respect and say, Marhaban. And then, now everyone can meet him. Subhanallah. He's kathabun. These liars, they lie to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are deceiving the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what do they do now? Because ulama have refuted them. You don't even know when is the date that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was born. How do you celebrate his birthday? So now they say, right, we celebrate the whole of Rabi Ulawan. Celebrate the whole month. Not going to celebrate one day. Oh man, subhanallah. Right? We're going to have milad every day. Every day for the month. We tell you stories every day. This, this is their procedure. They tell you stories, very really fantastic stories. You know, subhanallah. We have a mufti storyteller in Cape Town. It's one of the best storytellers I've ever heard, really. Subhanallah. A mufti, a position of, subhanallah, relaying and conveying Islamic rulings. But he's just telling stories every, every time he sees a new story. Oh, subhanallah. <laughs> this is the mufti. The people, they are being preoccupied with these things. They are being yani, preoccupied from what? Imam Ashafi rahimahullah ta'ala gave us a very, very good idea of what these people's objectives are. <coughs> when the Sufis, in that time they were not known as Sufis, there was no Sufis in reality. Imam Ashafi rahimahullah ta'ala, he called them Zanadiqa. He called them heretics. Imam Shafi, he called them heretics. He says, Khalaftu bil Iraqi. I lived in Iraq, people from amongst the heretics. Right? They have innovated something which they call takbir. Today they call it qawali. Today they call it qasaid. Today they call it anashid islamiya. Huh? Today they call it Qasidas. At that time they call it what? Takbir, referring to the beating of the drum and the sound that it makes. So Imam Shafi said, I left in Iraq this group of heretics who have introduced this thing which they call Takbir. Yulahuna bihi nas an kitabillah. With it, they divert the people from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
with it they divert the people from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you read the book of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala if the Muslim and if he studies it and adheres to it he will not have time for these things he will realize that these things are against the book of Allah you will realize this is against the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you will leave it and this is why they keep the people busy they keep the people preoccupied with these innovations so that the people don't learn their deen they keep the people preoccupied with fabricated and weak ahadith and made up stories so that the people don't learn the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so they come with fabrications and weak ahadith in order to justify bid'ah, innovations in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This issue, ayu wa ikhwa, is something very simple. Something very simple. If our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not do this, and if he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not command with it or encourage it, nor did his khulafa al rashidun nor did the rest of the sahaba, nor did the tabi'een or the atba'u tabi'een, nor the four imams or the students, then there's no doubt that it is a bid'ah in the deen. There's no doubt that it is a bid'ah. How can it not be a bid'ah? Either it's a bid'ah or none of the imams knew. None of the imams knew the great virtue in these actions. None of the Imams knew how beneficial this is for the Ummah. None of the Imams knew this can bring you closer to Allah. They were all ignorant of this. Until the Shias came and taught the Ummah. And then the Sufis took it from the Shias. Subhanallah. Anyone in his right mind, he would never say that. He would never say that unless he is insane from going with the Sufis. Like Imam Shafi Allah ta'ala also warned us and said whoever goes with him in the morning by the way will be insane. All these false practices, all these fabrications, fairy tales, baseless things not found in the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he will be far astray. So there is no doubt that it is a bid'ah. Now someone will say, yes, but it's a good bid'ah. Some yes, imams in Cape Town and say this. They say, no, we know it's a bid'ah. We know it's a bid'ah, but it is a good bid'ah. Now either you know, or our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows. Our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, "Inna kulla muhdathatin bid'ah wa kulla bid'atin dalala." He said, "Every newly introduced thing is a bid'ah, and every bid'ah is misguidance." This is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is receiving revelation from Allah subhanahu wa taala. He says, "Every bid'ah is misguidance." <coughs> now you come, you say, "No, this is a good bid'ah." Who knows better, you or Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Then we find from the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma He says Kullu bid'atin dalala Wa in ra'ahan nas hasana Every bid'ah is misguidance Even if the people perceive it to be good What do they say? But the people The people so many years the people are doing. Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anuma, he said every bid'ah is misguidance even if the people deem it to be good. So besides this being a bid'ah, if you look at all the haram that accompanies it, music, dancing, I don't know what else you can call these things that they are doing. You know, subhanAllah, if you look in Egypt, they have styles. Egypt is one of, the, one of those places, every moment you go to in a different area, they, they dance different styles. And some people, they, some of the chefs, they make up new styles. 
You know, they, they teach it online, they teach it to the people. They actually gather in these big tents that they have put all the lights and they're beating the drums and playing the, the instruments and they are singing the praises of the Prophet and the Salawat and whatever other things they, they want to sing. And the Sheikh will teach the people how to do the new dance. You know, for their tariqah. This is wallahi, this is happening today, in today's time. Go to Egypt, you're going to see this. You're going to see this. You're in Cape Town, some jump. Right? No, no this, is, this is the truth. Some jump when they do it. Some, they make like the make a cool, like they're picking up bricks. They say the slaves used to make so when they pick up the bricks, they used to so they do that. It seems funny that it is a real for why. You know, and subhanAllah, they all have their own different things. But the reality of it is that it is like they, they are dancing. Because when you look at them, they follow the beat. They follow the beat. Some of them they claim not know, but you know if if you if the ecstasy overtakes you, you know the ecstasy you can't control. But he's, he's jumping with a beat. So he knows very well what he's doing. He doesn't miss a beat. <laughs> you know, subhanAllah. So these things are attached to it. Ikhtilat of the men and the women. The men and the women mixing freely even in the masajid. Billah. In the houses of Allah. Nan mahram men is sitting looking at nan mahram females. Ali, they are all, they are not related, they are looking at each other. In the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, women are doing movements and swaying and, you know, subhanAllah, like that one in Muslims, that the movements they're doing is a fitna. You know, subhanAllah, and the imams are sitting there. The imams are sitting there and they are, you know, they are encouraging this and they are with this. And this, subhanAllah, when you leave the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, without a doubt, you can only go astray. You can only go astray. And we've seen our communities from small things, how far did it go? No, subhanAllah, back in, back in the day, you used to know about Khadat. We used to know about the Ashraqah, we used to know about the Riwayat, we've memorized all those things, we go up with it. Today, yani the drums are being beaten, people are dancing, new songs are being taught. Oh, subhanAllah. It, it, it becomes worse and worse. And on top of that, shirk is introduced. Now you can call on the Prophet Sallallahu now you can call on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Just the other day, on the radio, I don't know what is. I don't know the guy's name. He's one of the muftis that ask question on the radio. Old, it sounds old. He says, "No, you know all the people that go to the kamats, and we don't, we don't ask the kamats. Everyone goes to the kamats, but we, even if we go to the Prophet's kamat, the Prophet doesn't have a kamat." You know, this is how they try to deceive the people. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was buried in the house of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha because that's where he died. So now what do they say? Oh, even, even to the Nabi's karamat. Nabi don't have a karamat. Oh, so they didn't go and bow over the grave of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's haram. It's just haram. To bow over the grave is haram. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prohibited it. But they are doing it. They are even keeping milad around the graves. So he says, no, we don't ask them, even if we go to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to his kramat, say, Ya Allah, by the barakah, or by the, you know, the status of, yani making tawassul al-bid'i, making an innovated tawassul, which is also a means to shirk. But then in his very next breath after saying, we don't ask the Prophet, or we say, Ya Rasulullah, what are you doing now? Ya Rasulullah, intercede for us. You just said you don't know us the Prophet. So, this is how they introduce shirk to the people as well. So we don't call it shirk. 
He said, no, no, we're not making shit. We don't ask him. We just say, Ya Rasulullah. Well, you asking him, SubhanAllah. So this happens in these mawalid, in this mawalid celebrations also. That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he warned the Sahaba and he warned this Ummah saying what? لا تطروني كما أطرت النصارى عيسى بن مريم Don't exaggerate in praising me. Don't exalt me like the Nasara exalted Isa the son of Maryam. فَإِنَّمَا أَنَا عَبْدٌ I am only a slave. فَقُولُوا عَبْدُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ So say the slave of Allah and his messenger. Say the slave of Allah and his messenger. Don't exaggerate in praising me. Like the Nasara exaggerated with Isa ibn Maryam. Until what? Until they worship him besides Allah. Until they called on him besides Allah. Until some of them considered him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, subhanallah, now today, already this is from the Rafid Shia. The Shia, the Shia invented the Mawlid. It is already from them who say what? The same as Abdullah ibn Sabah the Yahudi who, who introduced and invented Tashayyu. The same as he said, Ali is our Rabb. Ali is our Lord. So just like they took the Milad from the Shia, Soon you will hear the similar statements from the same people. You will hear the same statements. You know, subhanAllah, where they exaggerate in the praises of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until they equate him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are already doing it. They are already doing it. They're giving him the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Giving him Allah sifat. He is all hearing, he is all seeing. He is all knowing, subhanAllah. Not Allah, he's speaking about Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These things accompany the miladu Nabi. Why? Because, like Imam al-Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala said, beware of small innovations. Because it keeps on returning until it becomes major innovations. And until it emerges the person from Islam. This is the reality. It becomes, and it comes from a bid'ah, maybe idafiya, until it becomes shirkiya or kufriya, and takes the person out of the fold of Islam. So the ruling is very simple: Amilat Nabi. It is a bid'ah, and all the things attached to it is haram, such as wasting of wealth, free mixing of women, musical instruments, singing in chorus. Exaggerating in the praise of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam <coughs> Equating him to Allah Calling on other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala All of these things make it completely haram And therefore the Ummah must abandon it The Ummah must leave it And return to the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam One of these people he claimed That this is from the dhikr of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this is from the remembrance of the Prophet. This is how we remember the Prophet We say the Prophet is not in need of your innovated remembrances. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ And we have raised for you your remembrance, we have raised for you your mention. That never will Allah be mentioned except that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be mentioned after Allah. Every adhan, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, ashadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. Every iqama, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, ashadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. Every khutbah, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, ashadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. Every salawat, in every salah, Every salah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad Kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim Innaka hamidun majid Every salah, every tashahud, he is remembered Every dua that is made from its adab Is that we make salawat upon our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Every sunnah that is loved by and revived when you get dressed in the morning and you say uh, the sunnah of uh, the dua of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, praising Allah for clothing you with it, 
Our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is remembered and he gets the reward of your action. Every sunnah that you do, when you leave the house and you say Bismillah tawakkal to Allah, when you get in your car and you say Subhanallah di sakharana hada, every sunnah he taught this ummah is from the remembrance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he will be rewarded for you practicing that sunnah. Is it not more appropriate that all these people who are far from his sunnah go and learn the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that every day of their lives throughout the day and night they are reviving the remembrance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they are raising his remembrance rather than innovating in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing what he warned us against. Is it more appropriate to leave these things and go learn the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and get away from these mu'ammameen you know these people with these big turbans you know subhanallah get away from them wallahi these are j- just like the shia the shia are the main deceivers the main kathabun of the shia are the mu'ammameen they are called the people with the amaim the people with the hikir these are the main ones amongst the Shia that are deceiving all those innocent people that want to know the deen of Allah, but they are being deceived by these shayateen. Likewise, amongst Ahlul Sunnah and likewise amongst the generality of Muslims, beware of these people. These people that wear, subhanAllah, turbans that make their heads unbalanced. You know, and on top of it, a slipper. Or an image of a slipper on top of it, subhanAllah, beware of these people. These are innovations. These are shirkiyat. These are khurafat. These are from the dalalat, from the misguidance that our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us against. And these people are from al-a'imma al-mudibin, from the misguiding imams. Look at them, where you find them. You know, they're posing at the graves, they're posing at qabrs. You find them at the qabrs when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do not make the qabrs places of worship. لا تتخذوا القبور مساجد Don't take the qubur as masajid. This is their sunnah. This is their call. The opposite of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This big imamas, this big turbans they wear, and this fancy gear that they wear, and extra scarves that they wear, all of this, this is just to deceive the people. Wallahi. It is just to deceive the people. فَإِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ تُعْجِبُكَ أَجَسَانُهُمْ When you see them, you'll be amazed by their appearances. Be amazed by their appearances. وَإِيَقُولُوا تَسْمَعَ لِقَوْلٍ When they speak, you, you listen. You know, when you look at the sifat of the munafiqeen in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you look at what these people are doing and what they are about, Subhanallah, you know, it, 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 makes, it makes a person fear for himself. May Allah protect us. We urge the Muslims, go and learn your deen. Go and learn your deen. Go and learn the sunnah of Rasulullah. Go and learn the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Learn what the Sahaba preserved for us, what the Sahaba conveyed for us, what the Imams reported for us. Go and learn it. Don't Run to everything which he said to you that this is dhikr, this is remembrance, this is the sunnah. Go and learn, go and find out. Because these people, subhanallah, you know, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection and his, and his safety. But there will be many, a person who was followed by the masses, who will be seen in the fire of Jahannam. And when the people ask him, what is your case when you will be in the worst of conditions? What is your case? Did you not used to order us with the good and prohibit us from the evil? <coughs> Ordered us with the good. Follow Kitabullah, Sunnah Rasulullah. Uh, follow the Kalima, La ilaha illallah. So order us like this. Follow the Sunnah and prohibit us from evil. You know, don't disobey Allah, don't disobey Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What will he say? He will say, I used to order you with the good, but I never did it. I myself never did it. I used to prohibit you from evil, but I myself used to do it. 
I myself used to do it. So we must be aware, ayyuhal ikhwah, our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us absolute guidance. And Mawlid al-Nabawi is not from the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or from the Khulafa al-Rashidin al-Mahdiin min ba'di. Not from the rightly guided Khalifas. Nor is it from the teachings of the Imams of the Deen, Abu Hanifa, or Malik, or Shafi, or Ahmad, Rahmatullah alayhim ajma'in. So this is an innovation in the deen, and every innovation is misguidance, and every misguidance leads to the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from misguidance and to save us from the hellfire. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa alham